Well, welcome back. This is going to be the uh, third of six videos looking at Chapter 9 from Wheeler's most excellent textbook, Security Risk Management. What we're going to do here is really two things. We're going to finish up uh, looking at the Octave Allegro model, and then we're going to immediately leap into writing that risk assessment report. So uh, we've just got one slide. We're in phase three now where we're evaluating the risk and developing our security strategy two parts to this. First part is identify and uh, analyze those risks that are out there. And of course, we know by this point in the course, a risk is a combination of a vulnerability and a threat. You've got to have both to have any risk. And we're going to look at the things that we've looked at really throughout the course. What's the likelihood, severity, exposure, ex uh, sensitivity? Then what controls or safeguards can we put into place? And what residual risk results from putting those safeguards in place? That then leads to a production strategy and some mitigation plans. All of those are fairly straightforward. You're making a decision brief as you're doing this. You're briefing executives on your engagement. You want them to come back and hire you again. So it needs to be persuasive and it needs to be convincing. Uh, those mitigation steps could be... Um, a short term or long term, if it's long term, it leads to additional business. All right, very good. So we finished up Octave Allegro. We're going to go into that now, that second part of this, and that's actually writing that assessment report. And so here's a potential uh, structure for it. You could use this in your final exam submission uh, for this course. Um, for when you do that risk assessment report based on your scenario. It's going to start off with an executive summary. Executive summaries are two pages long. They're not one. They're not three. They're not five. They're two pages long. Um, and we'll talk about what goes in the executive summary in just a second. You have the body of your report, which has uh, the threat profile and actually what your findings are. And then you're probably going to have a number of appendixes that are re re supporting uh, the report. Again, as a consultant, your job is to generate uh, repeat business and to generate new customers. So you want people to read this, understand it, act on it, and then hire you again to come in and do some additional work. All right. As we're looking at the executive summary, it's the most important part of the document as it's the only part that's typically read. The executives are not going to go through all of the findings. They might, but generally they don't. And when you look at the executive summary, it's going to have four components to it. It's going to have the purpose. Why are we here? What's the scope of that analysis? How did we do it? And what did we find? So again, you've got two pages. You're not going to spend a lot of time on... Um, the first two steps, uh, maybe a half page on the third step, but the majority of those two pages should be around the findings and summary. That's what's going to get you hired again. All right, so here's an example of a uh, purpose of the uh, analysis. We're looking at the underwater basket weaving and engineering university with a terrible acronym. Uh, and you can see the uh, purpose of the analysis listed there. Pretty straightforward. You don't want to waste a lot of space on this. Then move into the scope of the analysis. And again, this is just building confidence in the reader that you know what you're doing and what you were looking at and what was in and what was not in the actual uh, report. From there, you move into uh, what assessment steps uh, are there. And you can see the list of the assessment steps, how they went through and did this. There is a alternative approach listed on page 177 of the book. You might want to look that over. But again, look at this. Pretty short, pretty pithy, about half a page maybe on this. And then that moves into what are the findings. And as you can see, they're summarizing this information. There's a bit more information here uh, than you found in the previous steps. This is your uh, meat. Uh, associated with the actual report. Now, as you're doing this, I'm showing you this as if it's all text, but lots of folks are going to use graphics like this to kind of drive those points home of what's included. Of these three, I've seen the two on the left, the one with the pie chart and the one with a uh, report card as being the two most uh, popular. I have not seen the risk graph it's because people get confused as to what that is, and it really takes a lot of space and doesn't convey as much information. All right, so we've talked a little bit about the executive summary. Uh, you've then got that body and the security strategy associated with it. You've got to fill those components out as well. During the body of the report, typically you're just going to go into detail about the individual uh, vulnerability assessment activities, 
Um, you might instead highlight risks and include an assessment of the test findings. First one's going to be fast and simple. Second one's risk-based and more thoughtful. And you really have to make a decision. And you typically do it at a corporate level of how your consulting company is going to work and which approach is going to generate the most value uh, for you. Uh, once you get that risk body done, uh, then you're moving into that last component, which are all of these appendixes. Uh, that again, the security team will, uh, use and deem very valuable and they may be the ones that are paying for the assessment. So that's kind of important, but not the executives are probably not going to read. Again, optional because most people don't read it, but it is a good place to put all of this information, uh, that you've covered in your risk assessment report. Well, guess what? That brings us to the end of this third of uh, six videos that we're looking at or uh, not third, the fourth actually, fourth of six videos uh, looking at chapter nine from uh, Wheeler's most excellent security risk management uh, book. Uh, what we're going to do and what we did in this video is we finished up uh, phase three, but we also looked at writing a risk assessment report, the executive summary, main body, and appendixes that are associated uh, with that report. We're now going to move into the next video looking at audit responses. So keep on studying, keep on learning, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.